<laughs> Good job. Uh, Rico, uh, my name is Mike Demo. Um, I am, this is the State of Finances in the Joomla Project. For those of you who maybe saw my talk last year, A-B testing, which way does your duck face? Um, I've already given that talk three, uh, two, two or three dozen times around the world now. Um, so I'm keeping the duck theme alive, but this time Scrooge McDuck in his vault with all of the money that he has accumulated somehow. I don't know. Does he have a company? I'm not sure. But anyway, so we're going to talk about Joomla finances, and I promise to try to keep it as high level and non-boring as possible. So, first off, who am I? What is, why am I here? Um, I'm the treasurer of Open Source Matters. Um, I'm also a sponsorship manager for the Joomla World Conference. Um, I also, my day job is I'm an evangelist for Bold Grid slash in most hosting. Um, and I'm also a husband, video game lover, former Disney cast member, and owner of a wonderful dog. That dog's name is Balana. Robert's met her. Um, for those of you who get the reference of Balana, congratulations, you're a geek. Um, and I travel um, two to three events a week. Sorry, one to two events a week, sometimes three. Including at Salt Lake City, the Snap Mommy Blog Conference, which has a unicorn party. It's hard to see, but that is professional male dancers with a unicorn head. <laughs> <laughs> and this was a blogger conference. I, uh, it was quite interesting. This was the official drink. It was called Unicorn Hair with cotton candy and things. And it was way more adventurous of a part of a after party than I would have expected in the home of the Latter Day Saint Mormon Church. <laughs> so, but uh, I just love talking to people. And as treasurer, um, I became treasurer last year when our former treasurer had an unexpected departure. And <laughs> an unexpected departure. And due to U.S. law, I was the only person really who could take the role. Um, so I did it temporarily until the election that we just had in February, officially, February. Um, and then I got elected as treasurer officially, not just interim treasurer, so there we go. Uh, so basically that means is when you submit reimbursement requests or your Joomla day, I'm the person who pays it. So first I want to talk about a little bit about what is OSM, um, or Open Source Matters. So Open Source Matters is basically the Joomla Foundation. We are the legal and financial entity of the Joomla project as a whole. They are responsible to hold the trademarks, things like that, and that's with all these central Joomla funds for the official project. Not, you know, obviously every association, has, state, country has their own association, maybe like Germany or whatever. That's what OSM is. It's very similar to the WordPress Foundation or the Drupal Foundation. What it is not is a nonprofit. We used to be a nonprofit, but we weren't able to sustain it. Um, due to the regulatory laws in the US. Now, you would, might say, hey, wait, Drupal's a nonprofit, and so is WordPress. That is true. WordPress, however, is dropping their nonprofit status this year for the, found, for the WordCamp, like basically foundation stuff, and they're keeping their nonprofit to give grants to like um, community projects like Black Girls Who Code and things like that. And Drupal does keep their nonprofit status, however, the cost to be able to support that, it outweighs the benefit that we get um, from a tax purpose. So we dropped it to a non, not for profit um, association, which basically means we do make profit and we tax similarly, but the point of the association is not to make money. Um, Want to talk about a couple myths. Um, does anyone here who doesn't know the numbers, can anyone guess what the annual budget of Joomla is? No, no guesses. Mm -hmm. Who thinks it's more? Than, <laughs> who thinks it's more than two hundred thousand dollars? Who thinks it's more than three hundred thousand? More than five hundred thousand? More than a million? Depends. Depends. On the currency. <laughs> <laughs> Once a year. <laughs> sure. Um, we're going to talk about the, uh, the last three years, um, just because I don't want to pull too many numbers. But um, we're actually one of the most uh, lean projects out there. So if you look at the Drupal Foundation, now I'll read these numbers because it is kind of hard to see, but 
This is from 2015, which is the most recent reported year that I could get my hands on. The Drupal Foundation, as you can tell, has a total revenue of $5.1 million. This is for a CMS that has, what, 2% of the market share? 1.8? So like 2% of the market share. <laughs> um, We're talking numbers. <laughs> yeah. Numbers matter. I'm not on, uh, you know, I'm not on the marketing team. Um, so that's okay. Now, this kind of shows you, you know, where, the, where they spent their money, salaries, they do pay um, on the Drupal Foundation. And um, this is separate from Acquia. This is not Acquia's financials. This is the foundation, just to be clear on that. Um, they pay at 2.7 in um, about salaries the year before that. They had about 1.8 million. Um, the total revenue was about 4.5, things like that. So it's a pretty well-funded project. Now, it's not a huge surprise because if you look at that market, who they're targeting, they're targeting large enterprise. That's their market share, and they own it. Um, now, if you want to look at WordPress, which obviously is the most popular CMS, um, let's look at the foundation from 2014. And this and the priority from that. So this is kind of hard to see, but I'll zoom in. One million? Yeah. So you can see that they have a total revenue of 1.7 million. And that number is actually a lot less than I expected when I pulled these numbers. And it is kind of interesting. Uh, the prior year they had about one million before that. Uh, they don't have any salaries because they are very much like us. Their foundation is no paid staff. Now Automatic, which is very similar to Acquia and Drupal, does have paid staff and things like that. But from foundation perspective, which is what we need to compare, that's kind of where they're at. So um, I was surprised at how um, low this number was, but keep in mind that a lot of the companies that support WordPress do support the events in other ways, such as you know they might send their, their staff so a lot of the core contributors might work for Automatic or some other large corporation, and then that travel might not get absorbed by the foundation. The reason I bring these up is people talk about travel. You know, who has anyone here heard the myth that we do spend too much on travel? You know, compared to other foundations. But here's the thing, guys: is we're very different. We don't have an Aqua. We don't have an Automatic. We don't have these corporations that are so tied to the project in such a very specific way that will send their staff on behalf of the corporation. And there's nothing wrong with that. The, you know, It's good that they do that. It's good that WordPress automatic sends people instead of using the WordPress Foundation, in my opinion, because it's a for-profit corporation and they should. Um, but that means because we're 100% volunteer and we have no automatic, no Acquia, no corporate backing like that, um, our travel budget does go up. And we'll be able to look at some specific numbers a little bit later. So I find it very interesting that, um, oops, I find it very interesting that a lot of people, um, when looking at these numbers, to see where do we find find in there. So if you want to look at Joomla, this is 2016 tax year. We had an annual in total income of four thirty five, four hundred thirty five thousand um, dollars. This is actually one of our this is a pretty normal for us over the last couple of years. I can, um, we're going to look at how it breaks up over the three teams. But we run a pretty lean project relatively to some of the other um, projects that are out there. And I think we get a lot done for that 435000 What we don't have is a huge surplus of money. Um, we probably have cash on hand about $300,000 right now, give or take, in our accounts. Um, but that does include a money market fund, which has the explicit purchase of be, purpose of being an emergency fund to try to sustain us on a bare bones budget for two years in case we have a situation where we need to have that happen. Um, and you know, Joomla does a lot. Open Source Matters does a lot. We have this. This includes things like the Jet program, the travel program, so people wouldn't be able to afford to come to a conference and go. This includes sponsoring Joomla days and other and other things like that. It also includes all of our tax fees and our account. You know, we pay taxes. We have to pay taxes. We're a corporation, and when we have profit, which we try not to, um, but when that happens, we have to pay taxes on that. And because we are incorporated in the U.S., 
that has even more laws because we work internationally quite a bit, and we have to you know deal with wire issues and lots of things like that. Um, in the past, we've had issues where you know we haven't followed the rules um, as a pro as much as we should. I we've had situations years and years ago where we needed to pay someone some money if that was in Cuba. This was before it was lifted. So somebody wired it to a European company who then wired it to Cuba. That is very much illegal. And um, it wasn't a huge amount of money, but there's things like that that can destroy our biggest asset outside of our volunteers, which is the money that we need to be able to operate. Because I think we all agree coming to things like this, much more valuable than just doing a Skype call. Um, because yeah, I think you get more done, you get more energized, you make new connections. Um, I got involved in the Joomla community just by attending a Joomla day in Chicago. And then I started meeting people and coming and then here I am now. So that's where we were for 2016. So we can look at the last two years a little bit. So what I'm gonna show you is the balance statements for OSM, TLT, and CLT. CLT. It's been I'm so used to the new department structure now, I can't, I can't remember. Um, we actually are still following the OSM PLT CLT structure until the end of this month because due to the way fiscal years work, we have to, we can't switch to the new nine department structure until the next fiscal year and the fiscal year actually starts at the end of this month or next month as it is. So looking at OSM, you can see that we've had a total uh, in 2016 it was a total income of three hundred and twelve thousand um, dollars. Twenty seventeen had ninety three thousand um, dollars a total income for on the OSM side. Our expenses on OSM is going to look a little goofy because you, OSM is the main team besides CLT a little bit that brings in income. So the other teams have a lot of expenses, but not a lot of income. Um, total expenses from the OSM side were 147,000 um, for 2016. Uh, 2017, this is again year to date. That's why the numbers are small because it's January to April. 37,666 somehow. <laughs> That'll be last superstitious. Um, and then you can see we have some other miscellaneous income out here, which this is basically just interest earned on some of our accounts. Okay. Not that huge, and then you can see our total net income as it kind of nets up there. So that's OSM. What does CLT look like? Could so you talk a little bit uh, on the previous slide about where that income comes from? Sure. Um, our income comes lots of different places. I specifically didn't want to show exact numbers for the specific resources, but we have areas such as demo.joomla.org, um, joomla.com, um, the former demo.joomla.org host, um, they still give us affiliate revenue on those accounts that we sold. Ad rev, um, and the current Joomla.com and demo.joomla.org is on, is on SiteGround right now. And you know we get affiliate revenue and also agreements to a contract for that. We have sponsorships and global sponsorships that we sell. Um, this also includes income from JWC sponsors because it is one organization and the income has to flow through OSM before it goes back out, even though it is almost revenue neutral. Um, on the event side, um, we have an ad network, such as through buy sell ads, and we sell advertising. Um, you know, it's your department. You can <laughs> talk about all the different ways where in income uh, comes from, and uh, just people contributors, global sponsors, and donations. Um, although they technically aren't donations, they're contributions because we're not a nonprofit, so you can't donate to Joomla. You can contribute to Joomla. Something that I'm going to talk about later is, for the first time in recent years, you can give money to Joomla, easily. If you want to give 5 euros, 10 euros, 1 euro, whatever, you can do that right on Joomla.org. The button should be live later today. Sandra's helping us get it added. And it goes straight to our PayPal.me. You type in the amount you want to give, and you can just do that automatically. And keep in mind that you really need to look at the, you know, the finances of Joomla and figure about how you can give back. If you just give, if every site, Joomla site gave one euro or one dollar per site, you know, we would have, be able to do every code spread we wanted to do. We'd be able to market, we'd be able to go to every trade show. So 
we're very unique in that way that we don't have that Acquia automatic back in us. So it is up to us to try to support the project. Does that answer your question? Um, on the CLT side, um, you can see here that we've had a total um, income of $120,000. This is mainly sponsorships from JWC um, with a, for some other various income on the CLT side. Um, the, the, a year to date, we have a $1,000 income um, on CLT. Um, some of this also has to do that we can't realize the income until the service is rendered most of the time. So if we sell a sponsorship, that income is not realized until JWC happens. Um, our total expenses for CLT, the 2016 was 216000 again, including JWC and other events that the community team supports. And this also includes, you know, the money you get when you do a Joomla day, the $1,500 to get you started and things like that. Um, so far, here today, um, expenses of 56000 and then you can see the total of the two things together and see the total income from that. So, if anyone has any questions, just interrupt me, by the way. I'm trying to not get too much in the weeds here. Uh, PLT, Production Leadership Team, uh, no income, which that's to be expected. Um, now, if we can find a way for PLT to generate income, I'd be all for it, but as of right now, it, it's not a cost, it's a cost center. Um, total expenses, but it's what makes our product, so without it, we can't do anything. Um, pretty good. $44,000 um, last year, and this year, 29000 And this goes to the point where people all have opinions on where we should spend our money. You know, people think we should spend it on code sprints and not on you know, maybe supporting Joomla days. Some people think it should be all community and not on code sprints. Some people think we should never visit in person ever. That's a waste of project funds. Everyone has opinions and they're all valid. But here's the thing that, um, I hear all of them all day long, the good, bad, and the ugly. I get yelled at, I get harassed, uh, I get threatened, uh, mainly because when you deal with money, it's very emotional. It's very emotional. And people need a reimbursement. They're like, why haven't I got my reimbursement? It's been three days. You know, whatever the case is. Um, I'm like, yeah, but it used to be a month. So I'm doing, I've improved it, so bear with me. Because I'm the only person in the project who is legally responsible that can go to jail for the way we handle our finances. I am the only name that signs on our, all of our legal documents um, to the IRS tax attorney. The only one who's kind of similar is our president but that doesn't even, um, Robert, you don't even sign the tax returns. Um, so. You should. So then you can be, so you have to do So um, it's, it's us and our tax accountant, myself and the tax accountant. Um, and we do pay for a really good tax accountant and tax attorney in New York because we're weird. We're a weird co uh, company <laughs> that it's really hard to show on paper why we here and why we operate especially when we do so much international money out, it looks very suspicious, so we have a high risk of auditing. So that's why we try to um, make sure we're crossing our T's and all that stuff. But here's the thing that I don't do as treasurer, is I don't choose where we spend the money. I, I just don't. That's not my job, it's the board's job. I mean, just ask Soren, when he was having to do budget requests for your department, you're asking for help, and I was like, it's your department, figure, figure it out. Because it's, it would be irresponsible for me to decide where we should spend our money. I have an opinion, just like any board member does, but it's up to the board, and then it's up to me to enforce the board's decision. In the past, we might have had treasurers who had a different approach, but that's not the mandate of the treasurer position. It, I have fiduciary responsibility to follow the board's directive. If the board decided we should spend all of our money on candy, it would be up to me to make sure we never buy a single vegetable. So, and really that's what, that's what my job is. It's boring, it's not as exciting as, you know, I'm making it sound up here, but <laughs> um, I'm doing the best I can to try to make sure that we're running on time because and running well, because money should never be a factor to the progress of Juma, in my opinion. We don't have unlimited amounts of it, but 
stupid hoops like I I, I need you to I, I need to pay my personal money out here and then I need to wait for reimbursement. It takes three months to get a reimbursement. Things like that shouldn't happen. That's why we have things like Agencia, a corporate booking portal, so we can book flights and hotels for people. That's why we have a travel uh, a financial policy where it lists how you can spend money when you travel and not how you can spend the money. It lists what's appropriate. You know, do we pay for tips? Do we not pay for tips? As of right now, we don't, according to the financial policy. Now, the board may change that in the future, but as of right now, we don't. Um, you know, we have restrictions on what fair flights you can do, things like that, unless there's a medical reason or things like that. So we have very spe um, specific reasons. Um, when you travel on the project's time, you can't wear corporate branding for your company. You know, you can't promote it. That's not why you're here. You can talk about it privately one to one if someone says, oh, what do you do? Have it on a bio slide, that's, but that's that. So we are really trying really hard to be good stewards of the Joomla's project finances. Um, and that's why the board exists. You know, the teams tell their department coordinators who, what they want to spend money on or get money from. And then the department coordinators put those into a budget request. Those go to the board. The board then says, okay, we, we have, I don't know the exact numbers, but I think we're like six or seven times over budget right now with all the requests that we have in. And we're gonna have to go through that and the board's gonna have to say, oh, well, we need to prioritize. What's important, what's not, things like that, and find a budget that works for the entire project. Because if we did 100% on any one department, the Joomla would never function. We wouldn't be able to continue. <clears throat> Our 2016 budget overall, in case you're wondering, for last year. Um, the project total had a budget of $494,000, I'm uh, sorry, revenue, we had $494,000 revenue, and we had total expenses of $486,000 of expenses. So we actually did pretty well. We only had about a $7,000 um, uh, profit or something. So last year, for example, and for those of you who think this stuff doesn't matter, when I came on, I realized there was a big error in our accounting. We never accounted for PayPal revenue from the last five years. And that's a lot of money, if you happen to know that. So I had to pay a good, what was it, $25,000 tax, uh, tax payment in September. I wasn't happy about that at all. But I, I met with our tax accountant and figured out, you know, what do we need to do to try to make that money not just be nothing. And we had, we had to do a spend down of about $60,000. So in addition to some other people being able to go to JWC that might not have been able to, um, and some other um, things, like we pre-bought a lot of services for this year, like some of the software and like AWS and things, we tried to like pre-buy it just to get the spending done last year. Um, that's why the sprint that was in London happened because we were trying to spend down some money um, in this year, in 2016, if you know what happened in 2017, we can re realize the income there. Um, but AV equipment, that was a big expense for JWC. So now OSM has a bunch of assets that they can rent out to Joomla Days to support them with cameras and laptops and projectors and things. And the events department now maintains that and that asset. Um, and we're going to depreciate that asset over time. But I'm happy to say, because of the way we manage that, we got every penny of tax paid back. We got it refunded to us. So that was like twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars last year. We got back that we didn't, you know, that we would have lost. So um, looking ahead to the 2017 budget, we're in the middle of the budget process right now. In fact, the budget submissions just closed. So in the past, every team had to submit their own budget, and then. The, it was up to the board to decide where that money went. This year, now that we have departments, every department coordinator talks to their teams. Their teams let them, the department coordinator, know, hey, this is what we think, blah, blah, blah. The department coordinator then submits what they think is the budget they want for that department. That goes to the board. Then the board decides what to prioritize, what to reduce, what to keep, what to increase, if that is what the board decides. And then the budget goes into effect. We hope, hope to approve the 2017 budget tomorrow during the Make It Happen session. Um, we hoping to get it done yesterday, but 
Uh, I had to, if that would have happened, we would have had a team of, uh, we would have had a budget of only two departments, and that is just not going to work. So <laughs> uh, we are working on that right now. And we hope our fiscal year, which starts in a few weeks, will be able to have, for the first time ever, and well, not first time ever, for the first time in the last few years that, that I've been involved in finances, a full 12 month budget on time and not six or seven months into the year. So um, we are What's trying. Your sense of humor? <laughs> so um, that's basically what we're looking at. Um, and like I said, how you can help, if you go to the Joomla uh, sponsorship area on Joomla.org sometime today, there'll be a button and you can donate money. And I, don't, and I encourage everyone to have a set amount that for every project you work on, you give a euro or you give a dollar. Because that'd be a huge amount. Just make it a percentage. No, why, why, taking care of your server in the United States, it is a 15% tip minimum. <laughs> Um, I, yeah, that, that was the example that I was going to give. It's like, um, do you, you add that onto your invoices, right? I do. Yeah. Every time. As a 15% uh, contribution. Optional gratuity, and they all pay. I've never had someone say no. And if we had that happen every time, you know, maybe we're going to, you know, maybe capital will find new and creative ways to help us raise money. Um, we just did a very little, you know, a webinar that Robert did for Encapsula, and we're finding new capitals doing all these cool ways. I was find money, but you too can help and donate um, or contribute. It's not a donation. Um, you can't write it off any taxes. Um, and we can yeah. all, what? Yeah. Um, that you can't write it off any taxes. Um, and you can basically give to the project and make the project better. Because, like I said, if every site out there had a euro, we got one euro, we would be, we would be great, and we would be able to do everything we wanted to do from a financial perspective, and we'd be able to have the marketing we wanted, and not have money be a barrier to any of the goals that the teams want to do. So that uh, being said, um, also if you have ideas for capital on how to raise money, please talk to the capital team. They'll definitely love to hear it. Um, so yeah, that's basically, we kind of looked at why, where do we stand compared to WordPress and Drupal from a financial perspective. We talked about why the treasurer exists and what the treasurer doesn't do. We've talked about how we are a pretty lean project, you know, comparatively to some of the other associations out there and where that money goes. Um, we have about 15 minutes for questions. I know it's not the most, it wasn't the most exciting talk, but I think it's important. I want to make this information out there. Um, Every month we provide financial statements to the board. It's the board's prerogative to publish those or not. Um, the board will decide what level of transparency they deem appropriate. Um, but though that's an example of something that the, we didn't have regularly with the former treasurer, is we didn't have ad, ad, statements every single month. And now every month the board gets delivered full accounting statements um, that gets audited. So we're here to try to serve the project and yeah, any questions or anything? Sure. Um, uh, my question is, um, what are the plans uh, with, with uh, the money we have on our bank accounts? Are the budget uh, planned for um, only spending what's income? Or, or are we going to use the money we have on our bank accounts sure. for, uh, for the project? Sure. The wheat budget based on the expected revenue um, that we're going to get for that year and the rest of it we leave in the account. There's a couple reasons for that. Now we are going to move some of it, I think about fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 to a mutual fund um, that a relatively low risk mutual fund earns some revenue because we have more money in our account than is insured by the FDIC which is the insurance agency for banking. Um, the reason why we have that cusher is the point of the of our money market account is to have two years operating expenses in case of complete loss of revenue. Because the majority of our revenue come from two sources, mm -hmm. um, and if that some reason ends, is Google in? It's not Google. Not Google. No, it's yeah. So what well, is it? 
It's a uh, it's our demo sites. So it's it's the hosting affiliates. Yeah, hosting. Okay. So it's Joomla.com, demo.joomla.org, the former companies, demo.joomla.org, things like that. Um, that's mm -hmm. our main source of income. Second main source of income is sponsorship for JWC. Um, mm -hmm. But the, that is income that does get realized through the yeah, association. It's, it's in out. It's in out, but it's still yeah. income. Then after that, it's global sponsors, like the download paid sponsor, things like that. And then we have ads coming in as a four, I think, which is Google. Like so we keep the money in the, in the bank account, so I'm not, not spending this money over the years. In our, in our money market money account, that's correct. So, so the 200,000 money yeah. markets, that, that stays there, that's the emergency right. fund. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Well, with a, then we move the amount that goes over the insurance limit mm -hmm. into a mutual fund, just so that it's in a separate institution, and <coughs> so you can earn a better return on it. So. Okay, good. You had a question? Yeah, I was just wondering if you could speculate or if you know, uh, like Drupal is a smaller project than ours, but have like 10 times the budget, and you said because they have the enterprise market, but how does that make them money? Sure. Well, if you look at the Drupal Foundation, they have a much different idea of how they operate. If you've ever been to DrupalCon, it's like a trade show. It's like a hosting con level event where they have professional event services, things like that. And they have prices to match. But again, they're going after companies that service the Microsofts of the world. Um, so they can pay that, where our community goes after the end developer, you know, the end user. You know, we can't ask for $100,000 for a single booth, as so, one example. So they generate most of their income through a group of them? Well, half of it, uh, so. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I would need to dig more into it. It's a 57-page filing, but I just grabbed it. Well, 1.8 million in contribution and grants. How did they get that? How can we get that? <laughs> they operate the Drupal, the Drupal Foundation and, and the Drupal Association, and uh, it's expected that you will pay a membership fee of $100. And most people member. do. As an individual, there are no benefits. It is just that you... It is expected, or...? It is expected. And people do. And can we do something similar? Absolutely. But well, we can't expect. But well, I think <laughs> no. expect well, we know what you're paying. <laughs> pretty much. The pretty last Drupal Con I was at had 14,000 attendees. At the end of the conference, with the three different requests they made on three days, they ended up with over 8,000 new subscribers. As That's what I mean. Now, I'm not sure we're asking enough of our people. There's so many people who are based basing their entire business on top of Joomla. Precisely. And are not really contributing much. Which is why we just added the kind of contribution link. For the, you know, it, it wasn't happening for years. The minimum contribution for Joomla was $1,000 a year. That's been changed to whatever the heck you want, um, mainly due to an accounting issue. And I've, found, I've been able to automate that so we don't have, basically the cost of having a bookkeeper deal with a $5 donation costs more than the revenue we would get from it. Luckily, I've been able to automate it with an update to QuickBooks because they've updated their software so that it won't no longer cost us more to take $10 than it would be to get to $10. So we're trying to so have people find creative ways to give back in ways they might not have thought of before. Can we, can we make it like a GoFundMe kind of thing? Well, we don't even need to do that now. Well, because the GoFundMe will take a percentage as well. Yeah, but the, the bonus is that the people who fund you are kind of displayed in a page so they get a bit of return yeah. on uh, Eventually, we've talked about this, is I want to do some, you know, use a donation extension or something like buy a pizza for a PBF and then you get your name maybe next to a little pizza oh, icon. Pizza. Yeah. Well, so, pizza. Pizza. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just little yeah. things like that, you know, you know, buy a beer for, you know, things like that. Just yeah, but I could imagine there are medium-sized companies that are heavily based on Joomla that would potentially donate a thousand to be on top of that list, you know. Sure. So we, we have that now, and community sponsors are the largest amount of global sponsors we have by numbers. But that's um, community sponsored. It's not, we'll talk about it later but yeah. in, in, in capitals, but I think I think we could raise money that way more than we are. Yeah, and what's nice about PayPal.me is we can do a lot of that stuff. We can add, we can make special links. So it's just PayPal.me slash Joomla OSM. But if you do PayPal.me slash Joomla OSM slash 100, then it instantly becomes a $100 payment. 
or 150 so we can make buttons that say whatever you want to do and then you know and there's donation extensions that have similar things too um, as far as the membership goes um, our bylaws define members a different way than what Drupal does but that's one example of how they get that um, revenue um, WordPress is public However, they also separate the Drupal Association from Drupal itself so yes. members of the association are members of the 501c3 charity the yes. educational foundation and its mission is to put on educational conferences so that it's it becomes a sponsor of a Drupal con with its money so and that's how they also get the tax deduction and so forth so so by joining the association does not mean that you are a member of the core organization it is a separate entity Uh, yeah, WordPress is probably closest um, to us on how they operate, um, but they actually run pretty lean, and the majority, and this all goes back out. It's changing. They've changed their foundation to be a philanthropic uh, foundation for like coding, like black girls who code and inner city coding schools, things like that. And they're moving their word camps into a different. Uh, it's called a B Corp, a, a cor similar to what we are, we're a C Corp, um, but. Sorry, we're an LLC, I'm sorry. A B Corp, which is for the public <coughs> in the US, and that's who deals with all the word camps. And, you know, because all finances through word camps flow through WordPress Foundation. So everything from the venue cost, the meals, everything flows through word camp. Instead of what we do is we get $1,500 and then the local groups support that. It's not better or worse, it's just a different model. So. Other questions? How many taxes are we paying? Zero. Last year we paid none because we got it back with good cash management. Oh, okay. But if we wouldn't have done the the, the London spring about the AV, we would have had to pay twenty thousand dollars in taxes. Okay. Does it make sense to move to a different kind of country? Maybe Switzerland, something. That gets a lot more. That gets a lot more difficult than you think it would be. We've looked at it in the past. We are also, when the, the, the new board is gonna look probably later this year and other, so maybe for the next fiscal year, other ways to maybe incorporate as different types of entities in the US to be able to, be able to reduce um, the um, liabilities. But being able to move to another company, uh, another country has other issues and other headaches than it wouldn't be as simple as we think it would. That's the same reason why we don't have an account in another country. We've looked at opening up a, a European-based bank account, but the cost and fees, you know, Robin and I have talked to multiple banks. You know, we would be paying, you know, crazy well, it's to us, we have an account in the <laughs> <laughs> No problem, we can have uh, Robert Deloitte's. <laughs> yeah, retirement fund. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we have absolutely no issues with taxes or... No, 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 no. just, it's safe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would just like to say that if you are interested in helping out with uh, coming, working with raising money for uh, for Joomla, then uh, we're looking for volunteers for the capital team. Yeah, and I'm, I'm looking for, for for people for the making and make a capital session. For, okay, for, for the capital team or what? No. Oh, for your making. Yeah. Okay. Will mm -hmm. you, you uh, make make a session then? Oh, you, uh, yeah, the only thing, I have a board meeting, so... Uh, on the second half, yeah. On the second half. It, okay. it could be the first half. Okay. Uh, but if anybody is interested, uh, come talk to me afterwards. And, uh, uh, oh, yeah, the other thing we have uh, done recently is we're trying to save money in other areas. Mm -hmm. So look at ways that um, our domains, for example, we hold sure. dozens and dozens and dozens of domains we move those to a much cheaper domain register. Mm -hmm. And the domains that are not currently being used, we, we display advertising on to get revenue from. Mm -hmm. And so it's just little things like that that add up when you deal with the amount of scale of the amount of domains that we have to. So. Okay. Other questions? I know this is, was kind of a quick one, but yeah. Okay. In this one, you were talking okay. about publishing yeah. all the uh, details. Yeah. But is it possible for, for teams to have yeah. more insight yeah. and yeah. income? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, guess. talk to your department coordinator. They'll be able to provide the specific accounting reports for your team and for your department. 
um, if you're a department coordinator, what team is it? Certification team. Certification. If that department coordinator has questions, I can pull any reports for any specific department. Keep in mind, it won't, that won't be until the next fiscal year, mm -hmm. because up until the end of this month, we're still operating on the three-tier structure of the OSM PLT CLM. We can pull certification line items out of it, um, and we can provide reports on that, but it's going to be a lot easier for transparency so that, like, okay, you, this department, the legal and finance department, you know, here's your report. Well, similar to these yeah. reports that we were doing for the PLT, CLT stuff, you know, then we'll have one of these that every department coordinator is going to get on a monthly basis for just monthly. their department. Okay. Yep. Great. And then they can choose to share that with their teams if they like. Okay, other questions? Sweet. Oh, uh, where's the nearest Harbor Rock Cafe? <laughs> good question. <laughs> where is it? So, right by our hotel. Okay. Good. <laughs> uh, funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. And, and where's the slide with the pin collection so far? Because I really want to see how far you collected. I don't know if one picture could do it. Well, get started. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, thank you uh, so much. You have a question.